Dogs can help humans sniff out all kinds of things. Explosives, missing persons, illegal drugs. A dog's nose is an exquisite chemical detector. And now, the latest research is revealing that dogs can detect disease, even cancer. Now we know dogs can smell the prostate cancer in urine. The next stage is to work out how do they do it. The canine super nose is so amazing, engineers are trying to capture this ability in an app on your phone. Can a machine learn what the dog knows? I'm building a device that will fit in your cell phone so you can smell your own cancer without having to drag a dog around. Breakthrough is unlocking the amazing secrets of a dog's nose. A dog's sense of smell is up to a million times sharper than humans. And recent science is revealing that it is up to a hundred million times more sensitive. Dogs have got this incredible sense of smell. I mean, they have 300 million sensory receptors in their olfactory epithelium. So us poor humans have got five million and we still smell things quite well. A dog's sense of smell is their primary form of communication. They can smell odors that we humans can't even detect. Humans are very visual. Dogs use olfaction as their primary sensory function in comparison to humans. Dogs have a superhero olfactory system that enables them to smell and taste simultaneously with a special organ along their palate. Humans breathe and smell through the same air passage, but when dogs inhale, a fold of tissue just inside their nostril helps separate these two functions. When a dog greets another dog through sniffing, he's learning an intricate tale about what the dog's sex is, what he ate that day, what he touched, what mood he's in. Once it picks up on what the smell is, it's gonna send that information back into the brain where that information becomes coded and then understood by the brain and perceived as a particular odorant or a complex of odorants. When a dog sniffs, it's sampling molecules from the air in the environment. Um, those bind to receptors in the dog's nose, and that sends signals to the dog's brain to interpret those odors. It's no wonder, then, that while a dog's brain is only one-tenth the size of a human brain, the portion controlling smell is 40 times larger than in humans. The dog has a larger amount of the brain dedicated to olfaction has a larger surface area and receptive fields, and that is what gives dogs a superior capability to humans. It's the oldest, most primitive of the senses. The signals from the olfactory system are distributed throughout the brain, whereas many of our other senses, they come through a very clear switching channel and it's a very clear way in which the brain processes information. What all of this sniffing and processing really means is that a dog's sense of smell can do amazing things. And they do. Anything that has an odor, a dog can detect. Dogs can detect hard drives, smuggled vegetables and fruits, insects. There's some new evidence that dogs can predict when um, a seizure is about to happen. Even so, there is much to learn. We thought we understood how noses work. For many years, we thought it was a done deal. We thought vision was much more interesting. There are dozens of different ways that dogs can help humans, from detecting threats to detecting disease, including COVID-19 and cancer. Well, a medical detective dog is a dog that can smell disease. It sounds too, too much to believe. When a dog is living alongside us, they notice biochemical changes that occur when we come unwell, and that they, if trained correctly, can tell us about these changes. We do know that there are, for many diseases, a unique odor profile that the dogs are able to discriminate from a non-disease state. Most recently, new research has yielded even more surprises in the fight against cancer and viruses. 
dogs can not only detect disease, they can distinguish it. One of the things we did recently in, in the last you know, three or four years was demonstrate that dogs could detect that presence of a virus and, and discriminate it from very similar viruses that have very similar effects on an organism. We now discovered that this potential is huge. It seems every single disease causes a different change in our biochemistry and these dogs are just waiting to tell us. And this discovery didn't just happen in a lab. It started by word of mouth. Well, it was discovered um, that dogs could smell disease from anecdotes. So these were stories from around the world where people were reporting that they believed their dogs had warned them of a serious disease. Uh, many of the stories were cancer stories. People said that their dogs had repeatedly nudged or stared or pawed at them, and this had led them to go and see the, 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 their physician, and they'd been diagnosed with cancer. And from that point on, we believed that dogs could smell cancer. Dr. Claire Guest, who works with medical detection dogs, learned this firsthand. My life changed uh, nine years ago when my bladder cancer detector dog warned me that I had breast cancer. And my surgeon told me, had my dog not warned me about it, that my prognosis would probably have been very poor. And it was this experience that not only saved her life, but changed her mission. I knew my life had been saved by my dog. And I wanted to be able to transfer this knowledge so that many, many, many people in the future could be saved, you understanding how Daisy, my dog, had done it for me. This research led to a major scientific breakthrough. Dogs are ablier than doctors. The dogs are very, very able to detect even early stages, and this can make a huge difference to the future. But of course, the dogs can do it, smell it at much, much lower levels. The potential is huge. What the dogs are doing is they're generalizing, and that is something that no analytical tool, no chemical, nothing that, that we have right now does it. Now that we know dogs can detect cancer, the next step is to determine if they can discern a benign cancer from a much more aggressive one. Guest, working with the Prostate Cancer Foundation, is leading the charge. So we know that dogs can detect prostate cancer from a small drop of urine. What our work is going to continue to do is find out whether or not dogs can reliably detect the lethal form of prostate cancer. Now identifying this would make a huge difference to the um, success of, of diagnostics and the, the life expectancy of men suffering from this disease. A trained detection dog is the best tool humans have. The trained dog represents the most capable detection system that's available. Each one trained for a different disease. Terence Fisher started working with detection dogs during military service and has found dogs to be the best animal subject to work with. The dog has a better nose, has more olfactory sensors than humans, but also because they're easier to work with, they're very pleasing, so they're easy to, to deal with. You can control them. The training of a detection dog for any object follows a simple and basic formula. Basically, you're, it's a successive approximation going from very simple to complex, where you teach the dog, this is the odor I want you to find. If you find it, you get a reward. Normally, you find the dog a reward that has value to the dog. So food, toy, ball. So the dog learns, when I smell this odor, I'm going to receive a reward, and we teach them the appropriate behavioral response to communicate to the handler that they've encountered um, that odor. Trainers typically use containers or boxes that may or may not contain the target or signature set. It's like programming a computer. Once you program that computer and the dog is consistent at finding a five-hole or six-hole variable, then you can go into a transfer of learning make it more and more difficult until you're going out into a stadium where a dog is searching everybody or everything looking for this target that you initially taught in the boxes. There it is. The target contains a unique scent that the dog is trained to search for, identify, and alert to. Once a dog is trained to detect an odor, you can train a dog to detect anything with proper training techniques. 
Only some things that dogs are trained to detect are dangerous, like bombs and biological agents. When training dogs on potentially hazardous substances, you have to do so in a safe context. You wouldn't want to train a dog on explosive and have that live material in uh, a, a public setting. So one of our lines of effort is to develop a safe uh, training aid that does not carry with it the same hazards as the live material does. Researchers at Auburn University and the government have developed a game-changing training tool that captures the scent of dangerous substances without the harmful agents so that dogs can be trained safely. A perfect example is Okay, you got this COVID that's very contagious coming in. Now, we, we're developing a training called a poker. It's a polymer odor capture and release. We have developed it in collaboration with the FBI and NIST. Now, it's a patent pending training device that we can take an extremely dangerous uh, explosive virus. We can render it safe or we can be able to utilize it in operational searches. So you can train a dog to find a virus and do screening on this virus before it even comes into your country. The bond that has evolved between human and dog plays an integral role in why they are so well suited at sniffing. Dogs have evolved to readily and very eagerly form social bonds with people. And that makes them very trainable. So it's not just the animal out there working alone, it's that partnership, that dynamic between the, the handler and the dog. This is why scientists are so keen to understand the dog's unique neuro-olfactory connection. When a dog sniffs, they're able to take in a lot more at once. That sends signals to the brain, and that's where the odor is processed. There's a part of the brain called the thalamus that works essentially as the brain's operator. Different. Odors actually bypass the thalamus and go straight to the parts of the brain that process and interpret those odors, which are closely tied to the parts of the brain that process emotions, memories. Odors seem to have a very strong kind of emotional association with them. When you're sniffing something, you're not getting a list of molecules by name and concentration. What you get is more akin to an image or a poem or a piece of music. It is an experience, it's a perception. So one of the things we were interested in is, for example, understanding how a dog might process odor information. Auburn embarked on a cutting edge challenge, cracking the code on the neural olfaction connection of a dog using functional MRI. Functional MRI is a way to look at brain activity, how different parts of the brain communicate with each other. If we understood better what's happening with that information using functional MRI, we might be able to better understand how to train them to detect the, the range of things that we want them to uh, respond to. But this would present a near impossible challenge, training an awake dog to sit and stay calm for an MRI. In order to do functional MRI, you certainly would prefer to have an awake subject uh, because you want to present stimuli and see how their brain responds. There's a lot of chaotic stimuli. It's, it's a very loud, uh, very claustrophobic situation. And, and for doing functional MRI, it's even worse in terms of the sounds. A difficult task that required out-of-the-box thinking. Basically, it was the best little circus trick I ever came up with. A number of years ago, we were tasked uh, with the problem of the use of dogs in combat theaters. And part of that work, we needed to acclimate them to loud, sudden noises. And so we had developed techniques already for how to acclimate dogs. These training methods worked well in the MRI setting. And at the big aha moment was the first dog that we put in, and we saw the images of the dog's brain when it was awake and how it responded to those odors. The dog's brain was just on fire with activity in terms of how it responded when it was awake and alert and, and we presented those odors to it. So that told us right away, okay, the dogs need to be awake. 
Functional MRI research on dogs has made an entirely new area of brain research possible. Functional MRI is allowing us uh, an avenue to investigate how dogs think and reason and make decisions. And so that's not only going to help us understand better how to communicate with dogs, but it also has translational possibilities for understanding better how humans think and reason. A surprise breakthrough also emerges. A recent discovery that we have in our lab is that zinc is naturally present in the nose at the level of the olfactory system and is found as a zinc nanoparticle. Odorants that had the zinc nanoparticles present showed an increase in the brain activity. And what that's capable of doing is actually enhancing the ability to detect an odorant. And that's something that has a large potential in impacting our working dog community. And this is just the beginning of the research. We've only scratched the surface on the capabilities of what dogs are able to detect. And so being able to apply that to multiple areas that are emerging, such as biological detection, medical detection, has the ability to significantly impact the public. The more we know about the dog's nose-brain connection, the more benefits we can gain from their abilities. We can understand how that works. It will allow us to understand how better to train them and use them for detection work. This knowledge is also being used by researchers at MIT and the Prostate Cancer Foundation who are attempting to create an artificially intelligent dog's nose. Well, what Andreas uh, Moshin and his team are going to do is, is build a robotic nose that is going to detect odors in the way that the dog does. But he has to understand firstly the actual way in which the dog is, is, is identifying the odour, but also we have to learn what the dog's brain is doing. Creating this dog's nose that we have in our lab now is the first time ever that we're actually going after what something smells of as opposed to what something's made of. Can a machine learn what the dog knows? By training the dog in a particular way, we can, we can measure the dog's degree of certainty. And that's what's going to inform Andreas and his team of what cancer smells like. A device such as this would be game-changing for humanity. Let's put a nose in the cell phone. Dogs can smell cancer. I'm building a device that will fit in your cell phone so you can smell your own cancer without having to drag a dog around. Regardless, no matter how advanced an artificial dog's nose becomes, Many experts believe there's no substitute for the real thing. There's nothing as capable as a dog. We have only scratched the surface of understanding that system. The potential for a dog's nose is on the cusp of revolutionizing how people travel, how people interact, how diseases are moved, for detection dogs is really the sky's the limit. The versatility of what detection dogs can do is increasing as there are new emerging threats that come up and as we discover how to train the dogs to detect the odors. This is just the beginning. So, so the ability of animals to do these things um, is just, we've just scratched the surface. They're teaching us what's going on and we're, we're going to put it into a machine. I think we can learn a lot from the dog's nose. 